Well, back to show us the hottest new procedures in plastic surgery is Dr. Gavami, my favorite plastic surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next is the nose job. Yes, next okay. is a female nose job. She's of Middle Eastern descent. So she's it's gorgeous. A, yes, she's very attractive already, you know. So this is a great example of just creating a little more balance in the face. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. Thank you. So is this something you always wanted to have done? Um, yeah, ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to have it done. It looks very natural. Yes, you know, as I was talking, you know, plastic surgery does not have to be extreme. Mm -hmm. um, I like to do it on patients who have one or two things going on, or they're a mommy who are done having kids, have loose skin, or have w lost a lot of weight. You can do those things naturally. And so for her, if you look at her um, face from the front, you can see that it flows well, and if you turn to the side, I didn't scoop out her nose Ooh, or create a huge... We have nose envy. <laughs> <laughs> so when she smiles, if she smiles really big, the nose doesn't hook down. She has a beautiful, smooth profile line. And she can essentially, she can't now, but she can keep me a secret and say, I've never had this done. And that's fine with me. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. So another trend, is, I guess you can call it a trend, is more and more men are becoming comfortable with going under the knife or having plastic surgery. And with men, even more so than women, especially with the face, I like to do it so it's natural once again. You want to retain the masculine qualities of the face. So with him, he's a medical student, and he's taken the ethical oath that I've taken, so he knows all about less is more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. You? you look really different. Yeah. Doesn't he look different? I mean, you look handsome in both pictures, but you really Thanks. look very different. It made a big difference. Yeah, you know, part of it's the haircut. I can't take credit Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you look at, uh, his name's Shady, but there's nothing shady about him. <laughs> he's, a, he's a very strong, brilliant medical student, actually. And, you know, if you look at his face and in his career that he's going to have, and especially being a man, if you look at his nose from the front, give us a big smile. It doesn't hook down, and it looks natural. Right. And if you turn to the side. I don't think this is necessarily subtle, but it's a, it's a big change, but it's a big natural change. Mm -hmm. If you look at his profile line, smile really, really big, and you can see what a difference that is. Turn a little bit this way. See, it just, it brings the whole face into more of a natural it's, harmony. He looks great. I mean, he looks great both ways. Um, was it painful? Not at all, not at all. Not a bruise on my face either, which was pretty wow. unique. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. All I can say is I want your card for down the road. <laughs> <laughs> my pec implants were, were the most difficult because they had to cut you under the arm and undermine all the muscle tissue and stick like the implant in through the armpit. And truthfully, I couldn't move my arms for a couple of weeks. I had to basically go through rehabilitation to move my arms. But it was worth it, you say? It was worth it. Okay, well, I want to bring in Dr. Gavami into the conversation. As a plastic surgeon, would you ever cut off a patient who keeps coming back for more and more surgery? I do it all the time. Uh, one of our jobs as a plastic surgeon is we're physicians first. On the first day of medical school, we take an oath that we do no harm to patients. So first and foremost is the health and safety of the patient. Safety also means mental health safety. So if somebody's actively going through a divorce or they're grieving the loss of a loved one, I don't even do surgery in that time period because they're not of stable sound in mind. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's coming back for repetitive procedures, it's a red flag to me. And I say no all the time because to me, I want my work to be natural. I want someone to be able to say, essentially keep me a secret and to not say that they had anything done. I just like to operate on patients who have a little bit wrong here or there or they're aging and you do one or two procedures so throughout less their is lifetime. More. Yes. So in the case of Steve, I mean not to put you on the spot, but if Steve someone if he, if he came into your office, would you turn him away possibly? I actually would. Yes. And I would actually try to ask him if he is seeing a counselor or a therapist to see if there's other things that are leading to these procedures that can be dealt with the root of the problem. You know, a lot of people are getting these bargain injections. They don't know what it is. And I've seen people with horrible complications mm. that we have to do a two or three stage operation to reconstruct and rebuild them back to normal. Wow, wow. Dr. Gavami, do you see 
see many patients like Melanie, stories that they went to, the, to other countries to get it done cheaper? Yes, you know, um, this is a very important show because safety is so important and you do not want to bargain shop for your plastic surgeon. This is your body you're talking about. It's a sacred temple. I mean, you do not want to risk it by going to someone who's not certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. Being certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery is like a car having wheels. It's the basics. Beyond that, then you want to see how stylistic and aesthetic and how the work of that surgeon is as an artist. So you're always a physician first and a plastic surgeon and an artist of the body second. When you're going to another country like Colombia or South America, not that they may not have qualified plastic surgeons, but you don't know who's doing what on you. you there's no laws, there's no regulations on it. And you have to leave that country to come back with all the possible risks and, and they're germs, not germs even just traveling back home yes you know, right I mean I have a lot of people coming from Saudi Arabia from outside of the country to visit me I have you know princesses and foreign dignitaries but they come and stay for about a week or two or longer until I'm, I'm they know that they're finalized with their healing and I have them go to recovery hotels where they have nurses mm -hmm. there's a right way to do things in a wrong way you do not want to bargain shop for your body Unfortunately, my practice, they have no choice but to wait a little bit because I am booked up for a little bit. But occasionally I get patients from out of the country and I'll talk to them over the phone or Skype consult and I'll see them two days before the surgery. So that happens a little quicker sometimes. But it seems to me like you're, you're a unique doctor. I, do a lot of doctors really sort of take their time with their patients? They have to keep their practice going, I'm guessing. No, I'll be very honest with you. The reason we're seeing complications like your patients is because we live in a greedy world. I trained as a plastic surgeon because I love the human body anatomy and I like the artistic aspect of it.